Good morning, church. The grace of God is super sufficient for you and me, church. My name is Ntema Mudongo. I come from Atangwani, and I live in Haburoni. By the grace of God, I am a temple builder, and I am one of the millions whose life has been changed by God working through this ministry. I first came to 3G Ministries in January 2014, and the very day that I came, I received the grace of peace. Um, this encouraged me to keep uh, coming to church. Another thing that encouraged me to keep coming to church was the testimonies that were shared here weekend in, weekend out. People of God, when I came here, I was fascinated by the testimonies and somewhat mesmerized. I was so fascinated to the extent that even if I couldn't attend service, immediately after service, I would call somebody so that they could recite the testimonies of that weekend. From then, I understood the importance of testimonies. Today, I'm here to share with you a testimony about house breakthrough, car breakthrough, and deliverance from the spirit of fear. I'll start with the testimony of house breakthrough. Um, from the time that I started working, I've always been interested in property. I've always been interested in real estate. This led, this led me to uh, buy a plot in 2008 from a private company. Um, in the sale agreement, when I was buying that plot, there was a clause that says that if I do not build in two years, I would have to return the plot back to the seller, and the seller would give me a portion of what I had given to them as, um, as the purchase price. As I continued with life and life challenges, I forgot about that requirement, people of God. And I was um, surprised and taken aback when in 2013 I received a summons where the seller was um, notifying me of their intention to repossess the plot. I received the court documents which stated that the seller was going to give me 80% um, of what I had uh, bought the pr plot for. I had bought the plot for 200,000 and, 200, and they were going to give me back um, 160,000 and in return the plot was going to be, um, in exchange, the plot was going to be returned to the seller. People of God, this meant that I was going to lose out on the value of the plot as the plot had appreciated over the years. I was also going to lose out on the plot and I was also going to lose out on the dream of building the house. With the advice of um, my lawyers, I decided to um, take up the risk, I took up the gamble and I started building. I started building using my own savings because um, the building covenant had elapsed. As I said earlier on, the building covenant was two years. So no uh, bank was willing to finance me for me to build that house, people of God. As I um, was building, my belief then was that I would, um, with a structure on the, on the plot, that would put me on a better position to either win the case or to convince um, the seller that I could pay a penalty and retain the plot. People of God, from the very time that I received the summons, I tried to um, negotiate with the seller and they refused. They even turned down any um, proposal even to meet me through a meeting. They just turned out anything, everything, and they left it to, to, to uh, court. As grace would have it, just be, as um, before the case was going to be argued, um, the seller approached me and they offered that we should settle out of court, that I should pay penalty and I should retain um, the plot. With the out of court settlement, I was able to get a loan and I started building on, or continued building. And um, I was also able to go to China to go and buy um, some building material. Um, because of the nature of my job, that I travel a lot and um, sometimes not available, I um, decided to appoint a professional so that they could supervise the project. Once I started uh, coming to 3G Ministries, which was in 2014, um, I became more unavailable as my Sundays were committed to coming to 3G Ministries. This frustrated the project and this frustrated the professional and then he proposed that I should stop coming to church until the project had been completed. But people of God, knowing what it means to come to this ministry every Sunday, I turned out that proposal. The, professor, the professional was very serious to the extent that he terminated the contract and he also paid me back everything 
that I had paid him in advance. This meant that I, the project I, was handed back to me and I had to uh, supervise the project. As I said, people of God, I'm generally not available, so this slowed down the project. Um, but there was some mystery around this project because, as I said, I was able to uh, secure a bank loan and I was able also to, um, to buy material from China, but there was a whole mystery there. The project was so slow that I became frustrated and I pursued selling it, and all my efforts of trying to sell it proved futile. I um, then um, gave up on the plot and, and on the project. The project came to a complete standstill, and I continued with my other areas of my life. Everything changed in May 2018 when, the, when our Father and the Lord, Prophet Cedric, made a prophetic declaration that temple builders were going to be um, strong spiritually, strong financially, and strong um, emotionally. From that declaration, uh, my dream of building the house was reborn, and I was able to complete the house and move into the house by December 2018. In October 2018, to, on the 14th of uh, October 2018, to be precise, I was also privileged to attend um, the special service for the visitors, the prayer line. And in that special service, the man of God blessed everybody in attendance with a living sticker. And in um, giving us the living sticker, he also made a prophetic declaration and said, that was going to be our key to our new house and our key to our new cars. Um, people of God, the Bible says that miracles and signs and wonders happened in the times of Jesus Christ. And in the same way, they are also happening today. But because of time and age, not all uh, miracles, not all prophetic declarations can be recorded. Um, people of God, on that day that the prophet made uh, the prophetic declaration, I believed strongly in my heart that I had um, received um, the blessing of the house. And I didn't know that by God's favor, I'd also been included in the blessing of the car. So, I was, so a dream that I had for more than 10 years, uh, a project that I um, was working on for more than six years, only came to the realization after those two declarations by the man of God. Moving on to my next testimony. My next testimony is about car breakthrough and deliverance from the spirit of fear. From a very young age, from my childhood, I have been dominated by the spirit of fear, and this was worsened when I had a car accident. In 2005, I was involved in a car accident where the car I was driving overturned. Um, this accident was so severe that the car was written off. And despite that um, the car was written off, I did not sustain any injuries, not even any scratches, which was quite um, a surprise for everybody who saw the car. As I said, the, the car was written off, and um, the insurance company was going to uh, pay me an amount, and the amount they were going to pay me was not enough for me to uh, buy another car, or a car of the similar size. Uh, so I approached the insurance company so that I could buy the scrap, and they agreed. And this is the car that I was driving um, since then to uh, about a month ago. There are two things that um, happened to me on the day of the accident, which I found to be unusual, but I only came to understand when I came um, to the presence of God. On the very day of uh, the accident, um, my conscience was telling me that I should not give anybody a lift, as I did not want to be held accountable for anybody's death. The other thing um, that happened to me is that as the car was um, overturning, I lost complete control of the car, and I gave up. I gave up in that I believed that I was either going to die, and if I was lucky, I would wake up in hospital. And as I gave up, at the moment that I gave up, I saw two versions of myself. And this is what the man of God explains, that it's a separation of your body and your soul, which means I was saved from um, death at that point. 
Following the accident, it became impossible for me to drive, um, especially outside Khaboroni. Um, even in my early days of coming to 3G Ministries in 2014, I wasn't able to come to Kopong. I relied on family and friends for me to come to church, and over the years, I then gained confidence and I was able to drive to Kopong. Um, since coming to the presence of God, I've only been able to drive three times outside Khaboroni, beyond Kopong. And even then, it would be because there was no option for me, um, because I would have to travel there. And my average speed would be um, 70 kilometers uh, per hour, people of God. I, I couldn't drive. Every time I tried to drive, I would... Um, every time I tried to drive, I would have palpitations, I would sweat, uh, my heart would beat uh, very fast, and the only thing that would dominate my thoughts would be um, death, that I was going to die. For all my transport needs, I would uh, depend on my family and I would depend on my friends. And this people of God was so serious that sometimes I would have to get my own mother to drive me. And my mother is a retiree, she's over 60 years. So this was um, an embarrassing situation for me. People of God, ever since I started working, I've been blessed with, uh, uh, with good jobs. Put me in a, better pos in a good position to afford a car. And over eight years, I've been having a car allowance. And as you may know, when a company buys, uh, gives you a car allowance, they are, they are expecting you to buy a car. But I really, it really was an, uh, something what, that was not possible with me. I also re recall that um, out of concern, my mother in 2016 said to me, um, if she had the money, she would buy me a car. This was a very touching statement for me to hear from my, from my mother, particularly that she was retired. Just to brush her off, I told her that I was going to buy a car the next year. This didn't happen in the year 2017. This didn't happen in the year um, 2018. In August, uh, people of God, uh, through um, the declaration of uh, the, the able servant that I referred to on the 14th of October, I was able to summon the courage to acquire a car and even to drive to Francistown and beyond within a week that I acquired the car. And I was able to drive at normal speed. Um, was driving since 2002. This is the same car that I was involved in an accident in the same car that I was written off, the same car that I fixed, and I've been driving since 2005. And here, this is a picture of, um, just to show the mileage, that this, this was quite uh, serious, because a car that I've been owning for more, for more than 17 years had uh, a mileage of uh, 190,000, 193,000. This is the car that, um, through God's favor, I was able to acquire. And this is the house uh, that God blessed me with. When I came to 3G Ministries, I had for 12 years been working in the financial sector. My background is, um, in terms of training, I've been trained in finance, accounting, banking, and investments. And I thought and I believed that I knew um, a lot about money and financial issues. Unfortunately, my life was not reflective of um, what I knew. My life only began to change when I came to the presence of God and it slowly be uh, began to um, reflect um, the, what I've been taught by the man of God. When I first came to 3G Ministries, my, I had hardened, hardened my heart in terms of any teachings towards financial issues. This is because of what the world says about um, giving in living churches and uh, preachings on prosperity. When I made a hard decision that I was going to start fellowshipping in 3G, I began to look forward to the day that the man of God would preach about um, financial issues. And the day that he, start, he preached on financial issues, um, surprisingly, 
he went, he took a completely different direction from what I had expected him to preach on. The man of God said in that preaching that fasting, praying, and giving are all equivalent pillars of Christianity. They are all equivalent legs of Christianity. And as long as we abandon one of them, our Christianity was questionable and we would not be able to enjoy the fullness of Christianity. Following that, I started taking up a keen interest on all financial issues that the man of God was going to preach about. I looked forward, people of God, to those days. And um, over time, I realized that a lot of the things that the man of God was preaching were consistent with what I had learned at school. Um, the man of God would teach about banking, where he would explain the circulation of money, he would talk about risk and investment, and he would even talk about insurance. He would teach about giving to the needy, and he also taught about the importance of forgiving before you give. People of God, this changed my whole life. It changed my whole life in terms of um, what I understood about financial issues and how I conducted my financial issues. And as I say, my life was changed and completely took a complete turnaround when I started implementing what the man of God taught me. This then leads me to my advice, people of God. Do not harden your heart towards anything that the man of God says. Remember, people of God, what the man of God says. He is not saying it in his own will. He is saying it um, being led by the Holy Spirit. And the scriptures say, whoever honors a prophet will receive um, the rewards of a prophet. And in honoring the prophet, the only way we can honor a prophet is to be obedient to his word. And being obedient to his word, we are directly being obedient to God himself. And who can be against us, surely, if we are in God? Nobody.